I've had several requests to do a video showing how to incorporate damping into your equations of motion. So I thought I would revisit this problem that you've seen before with the two degree of freedom system. And this time I would add dampers, a damper C1 and C2 in between the two masses in that case. So the first thing that we do in using Lagrange's equations is we find the kinetic energy of the system. The kinetic energy, which we can call T, Uh, kinetic energy, T is equal to one half, a half mv squared of each of the masses, right? So it's a half m1, and the velocity of mass 1 is x1 dot squared, plus one half m2 x2 dot squared. We'll call that equation 1. All right, then the potential energy. O ten show energy. And the potential energy is stored by the springs in the system. And we call the potential energy V, and that's a half kx squared for each of the strings, springs, where x is the displacement of that spring. Okay? So this first spring, k1, the displacement of that is just equal to x1. So the energy is one half k1 times x1 squared. And then for the spring of stiffness K2, it's plus one half K2 times the deflection of spring K2, and that is X2 minus X1 quantity squared. We'll call that equation two. Okay. And then finally, what we do to incorporate the damping is we add something called the Rayleigh's dissipation function. Let me write that out. Rayleigh's dissipation function. Oops. Try it again. All right. And we call this R. And what this is, is kind of like the kinetic energy, but let me write it out and then we'll talk about it. Um, so looking at the first damper, it's one half times the damping constant, which is C1, times the velocity of the damper squared. Now the velocity of this end of the damper is zero because it's attached to a wall. And obviously the velocity of that end is just the velocity of mass one. So it's one half C1 times X1 dot squared. And then similarly, the relative velocity between the two ends of damper C2 gives us one half C2 times x2 dot minus x1 dot squared. We'll call that equation three. All right, let me make a bit of more, more space here. Okay, so again, the Rayleigh's dissipation function looks a little bit like the kinetic energy in the sense that it's a half times a constant times the velocity squared. But the difference is the kinetic energy deals with the velocity of the mass. The, the uh, Rayleigh's dissipation function is the relative velocity between the two different ends of the damper. I just wanted to point that out, not to be confusing. All right. And then we can write the Lagrangian. We know the equation for that. That is just L equals T minus, minus V. Uh, we'll call that equation four. And then we'll write a form of Lagrange's equations, which is actually called the extended version of Lagrange's equations. Lagrange's equations. And it's extended in order to incorporate the effect of the Rayleigh's dissipation function, which represents an energy loss of the system. So let me write it out, and then we'll talk about it. It's the time derivative, as before, of partial of the Lagrangian with respect to q dot i, sub i, minus the derivative of the Lagrangian with respect to the generalized coordinate, qi, and then here's the new term, plus the derivative of the Rayleigh's function, the Rayleigh's dissipation function, the partial of that with respect to the generalized velocity. 
equals the generalized force Q sub I, and we'll call this equation 5. So let's just discuss it again. Um, this part is exactly what you had before. And then we've added this Rayleigh's dissipation function term, which includes the damping. And really, we take the derivative of that function, the partial, with respect to the velocity, which is kind of what we did here. We're just not taking the time derivative after that. Okay, and I think that will make sense as soon as we we do the uh, we plug things in. So, in order to find the first equation of motion, we're going to substitute equations one, two, and three into four. Let me just say that one, two, three into four, and then we'll uh, we'll substitute all of that into five. Okay, so. Let's take this first term, the derivative of the Lagrangian with respect to q dot i, and then the time derivative of that. Well, in the case of x1, the x1 equation, the only thing that survives is this first term from the kinetic energy, and that, the derivative, gives you m1 x1 dot, and then the time derivative of that gives you a double dot, plus... This term survives from the, uh, the potential energy. So the minus and the minus becomes a plus, And we get kx1. OK? I'm sorry. And then there's an x1 in this term, too. So it's not just the first term that survives. We've got to take the derivative of that. That will give us minus k2 into x2 minus x1, right? We take the derivative of this, which gives me 2 times x1 minus x2 times the derivative of what's in the brackets, which is minus 1. That's the reason for the minus sign. Okay, and then plus the part that comes from the Rayleigh's dissipation function. And in this case, it is plus, this was k1, excuse me, so this is c1 times x1 dot minus c2 times x2 dot minus x1 dot equals, in this case, there's no force. Why don't we put an external force here on mass number 2? We'll just call this f of t, okay? Just to make it a little more general. So the first equation of motion has no force uh, because there's no force acting directly on mass 1, so this will be a 0. And I'm going to rewrite that as m1 x1 double dot plus, let's group c1 plus c2 times x1, uh, x1 dot, excuse me, minus c2 x2 dot um, plus k1 plus k2 times x1 minus k2 x2 equals zero. We'll call that equation six. That is your first equation of motion. And then for the second equation of motion in the x2 coordinate, proceed the same way, only now we're taking the derivative of this with respect to x2. The second term survives m2 x2 double dot. Okay, then only this term survives from the potential energy, and that gives us plus k2, x2 minus x1, plus c2, x2 dot minus x1 dot. And that is equal to f of t. And I can rewrite that as m2 
x2 double dot um, minus c2 x1 dot plus c2 x2 dot minus k2 x1 plus k2 x2 equals f of t. Call that equation 7. Oops. So in fact at this stage we're done, but let's write it in a more compact form in matrix notation. So turning the page, um, I've copied equations 6 and 7 from the previous page, and let's just rewrite this in matrix form. Uh, so M, oh, let's change the color to black. Uh, M1, whoops, why is that happening? Okay. M1, 0, 0, M2, times x2 double dot, I mean x1 double dot, excuse me, x2 double dot, plus the damping matrix looks like C1 plus C2 minus C2 minus C2 again, and plus C2. And that multiplies the velocities x1 dot and x2 dot. And then finally, the stiffness matrix, which looks a lot like the damping matrix, is k1 plus k2 minus k2 minus k2 and k2. And then this multiplies the coordinates x1 and x2. And that is equal to the vector 0 and f of t. All right, and this is equation 8. And we are done. Put a red box around it. And that's it. So just to recap quickly, what we did is we incorporated damping by adding something called the Rayleigh's dissipation function, which looks a lot like the kinetic energy, a half times the C value times the velocity squared. We then extended Lagrange's equations to add this term where we take the derivative, the partial of the Rayleigh's function with respect to the generalized velocity. And then we just go ahead as usual. And what you'll find is if you set your C values to zero, this will reduce to the equations of motion that you have seen before for the, um, the undamped vibration of uh, this two degree of freedom system. Anyway, that's all I want to say about this video. I hope you found something useful in it. If you did, please go ahead and smash those like buttons so that others can get to view it too. If you have any questions, I'd love to hear from you in the comment section, section below. Thank you very much for watching and I'll catch up with you in the next video.